Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Hello, welcome to the Eunice Mala Show. I'm your host Eunice Mala. Now I know with ladies, they love shoes, but how many men do you think love shoes and actually collect them? We have a guest with us today who collects shoes and had an OMA Sneakers Expo here in Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome to the show, Rodney Collins. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. Oh, it's Thank great to having me. Yes, you're most welcome, you're most welcome. So recently you had the OMA Sneakers Expo here in Omaha. Mm -hmm. What prompted you to have that event? Uh, I wanna say, um, I just think that it was time for us to have one. Um, there was a lot of guys here that like shoes and I've seen that from, a, I used to work at the old shoe gig um, a few months ago. And um, I just felt like, you know what, it's time to do a sneaker expo, um, but it's also time to also give back to. And we, the donation aspect of it was something that we really needed to get done because I have guys who have 300, 400 pairs of shoes, but um, wow. who have a bit of issue donating them. So this event kind of forced <laughs> them to do it. So. Three, 400 yeah. shoes. Are okay. you serious? I, I promise you. How many shoes do you have? Uh, as of now, I probably have about 25 pairs, but about a year ago today, mm -hmm. I probably had about 200 pairs as well. So Really? Yeah. And how much money would you say you put into it? Uh, shoes? Uh, too much. I don't, I don't think it'll, <laughs> it'll make my parents very happy, uh, but too much money. Uh -huh. um, and I, I actually had an epiphany mm -hmm. a year ago, and I said, you know what, I need to donate a lot of these shoes. You know, there's a lot of kids my age who play basketball mm -hmm. or, you know, who are just... I wear a size 13 or 14, so there's a lot of those guys who can't find shoes in town. Well, guess who has them all? You know, I, you I, yeah, it. so uh -huh. decided to just give them away for dirt cheap or free. Yes, so. yes. I know, and I think that is sort of like, I don't call, I wouldn't say it's weird, mm -hmm. but you don't hear of men collecting shoes or being fascinated with shoes. Usually it's mostly sports yeah. uh, affiliated things, yep, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. Or car collections. Mm -hmm. That's their fascination area. What, what, what is it about shoes that sort of uh, prompts to your passion? Um, I want to say it was probably not being able to have them at a young age. Um, I, I always loved basketball. You know, I love basketball more than any other sport there is. Um, but I always had a, a weird fascination with the shoes. You know, certain players wear certain shoes for certain things. You know, like the point guard, he his shoes are probably going to be a lot lighter than the guy who's a center. His shoes are probably going to be a lot more sturdy. You know, they're going to be, you know, built like tanks, you know. Really? Yeah, because, you know, you, you take a beating in the paint. So, um, uh -huh. Um, I don't know. I think it probably came from basketball and just just not being able to have them because I wanted them back <laughs> in the day. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're like, oh, this is something I need to fulfill inside of me. You know? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is absolutely understandable. So you have some shoes here for us. What kind of shoes are they? Yeah, I do actually. Um, I have the uh, the Air Jordan Retro One uh -huh. KOs, and they're called KOs because they are made out of canvas here. Um, the shoe here originally came out in 1985, and this uh -huh. is a retro version wow, of the shoe. Wow, let me yeah. feel it. Yeah, definitely go ahead. Take wow. It yeah, it's it's a boat. So yeah, yeah, it's very <laughs> good quality shoe too. Yep. How much would this cost? Do you think? Uh, retail was uh -huh. probably about a hundred bucks. I probably paid 150. Just oh. you know, somebody had to make a profit somewhere. Yeah, so. yeah. But um, yeah, as you see, they it has a uh, the yellow paint here to give it that age look. It's not they're not old at all. They okay. Actually, just came out, but. Nike painted the yellow paint on there to make them look a lot older than what yeah. they were. Oh, very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Now back to the OMA um, Sneakers Expo. I had a chance to go there and thank you for inviting yeah, me and stuff. Course. We really appreciate it. The vibe was great and I was surprised to see a lot of people there who were fascinated by shoes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, I think this is really a great event that you guys held and everything. So how many people came to the event? Do you know how many attended? Um, well, we bought wristbands um, in packs of 500, so mm -hmm. we know for sure that we got through 800 of them. So at least throughout the course of the day, we had about 800 people. Not all at the same time, but yeah. you know, some people still, decided to come and leave and whatever, yeah. Yeah, and it's the first time you guys ever had that event and stuff. The first first annual, so there will be a, a definite next one next year, so. Uh -huh. And you're 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Are there any <coughs> other things that you're doing apart from the sneakers um, passion that you have? Yeah. Um, 
I also, I also play in a band. Um, the name of our band is called Dream House, and that consists of uh, myself, my girlfriend, and another friend of mine. His name is Brandon Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, you know, we play all types of music. Um, I want to say my passion for music was probably before sneakers. Um, I remember being in elementary school playing the trumpet and the baritone and things like that and the piano and whatnot um so yeah i want to say the band is probably the biggest thing that's even close to the sneaker thing right now that i'm doing everything mm -hmm. else i'm just a regular family guy so yeah and yeah. then you have a t-shirt too that you sell right you oh yeah company. um yeah. so yeah I was, where the expo came from uh, mm -hmm. when i was 16 i started my own business um it was called fake nebraska mm -hmm. um and it was for guys who like shoes we started off as a page on facebook and um, about a year or two into it, I had a good friend of mine named Lee Martin who had his own clothing brand who decided to, you know, do a collaboration with us. And so we, um, we ended up doing a few designs and taking it to the next level. Um, I had no idea that guys really wanted our shirts like that. I just thought guys just wanted to be on Facebook. But um, they wanted those shirts and we sold out of them very, uh, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. We did, you know, units of 50, you know, two different colors, two different styles, you know, and we did you have a logo on there and stuff like that or? Oh yeah. Yeah, what oh, was yeah. the logo and what is it about? <clears throat> um, at the time, um, it was, it said fake across the front. Um, mm -hmm. It was F and then the A was upside down and mm -hmm. we put bull horns through the, through the, uh, the sides and then K-E. Mm -hmm. um, and that was our logo for the longest until a good friend of mine, um, at um at the company ridiculous creative mm -hmm. um designed me a lace logo um and so we were able to use that instead um and you know it's just better because you know we have rights to that logo so it can legally be ours so, yeah exactly yeah. i know knowing the business aspect of things is very important you yeah. know because when you start making the big money people come after you, you yeah know? no yeah. yeah you're definitely right yeah <laughs> Yep. I know you don't want to lose your money. You no, know? I don't. Yeah, at a young age too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. That wouldn't be a good thing at all. So, now with the shoes and the sneakers, they mm -hmm. get very expensive. <laughs> you were mentioning sometimes they could go for you know three, four hundred dollars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is this a wise investment? Um, for most, yeah. But I look at it. Um, if you if you're collecting things and looking at it as a, uh, a form of investment, you probably shouldn't be doing it. A lot of the guys who make the big money off of shoes were guys who just bought the shoes because they loved them. Mm -hmm. That and um, when the shoes came out originally, they weren't as much, you know, as of course, you know, companies like Nike and Adidas, you know, they say, okay, we can raise them, you know, the dollar, so many dollars per year and mm -hmm. hope that nobody notices or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, I wanna say um, it can be a wise investment if you actually love shoes. Um, I want to say I've probably made like $2,000 off of selling shoes in the past. Um, and those were just off of shoes I bought when I used to work at, at the old shoe gig mm -hmm. back in the day. But um, I want to say, yeah, it, it can be a, a definitely good investment. It can definitely, you know, get your bills paid mm -hmm. if, if you're behind on them. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know like before, you know, because before you became a craze, how much did the shoes go for? Um, just sneakers in general? Um, yeah. They can't. Oh, God. Um, they always went for about a hundred bucks, just somewhere really? in there. Like, yeah, about a hundred. Since the nineties and eighties, because I know the eighties were Adidas, you know, yeah. with the <laughs> well, like Run well, DMC. They used to be really fascinated with the shoes yeah. and everything, you know. No, yeah, you're definitely right. And they well, were part of like the rap culture. Yeah, you know? yeah, okay. from the get go. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Um, and back in the day, I don't believe Adidas were that much, but um, when the Nike Air Jordan came out, they mm -hmm. were about a hundred bucks. So it was one of the first shoes I kind of just like, okay, a hundred bucks. Okay, only because it's Michael Jordan, like these shoes better do something, you know. I know, cause, cause sometimes I think like, okay, you know, it's a business, it's a marketing mm -hmm. idea that people have that, you know, okay, if I get some of these Jordan shoes, I'm gonna play as good as him yeah. when it comes to basketball. Yep. Do you think that maybe the kids are being brainwashed at all to think that way and to invest in shoes that, you know, mm -hmm. cost three, four hundred dollars or? Well, yeah, back then, yeah, um, only because he was everywhere, you know, and he still is, you know, in a sense. Um, not in a physical sense, but his fingers are still in everything. Um, and yeah, I want to say um, they do have the kids brainwashed to kind of think that you can play like him. They mm -hmm. they market Michael Jordan nowadays in 2014 as a guy who never missed any basketball shots. Yeah. He never missed any dunks. He never lost any games. Uh, if you if you look the guy, he has lost games and he did miss a lot of shots. Um, and now, do he, you think like maybe LeBron is taking his position now? Uh, he's working on it. I want to mm -hmm. yeah. As far as like uh, media goes and things like that, he's definitely working on it. Um, yeah, taking the whole sneaker game. Yeah. From him and everything. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't know if he'll ever be able to take it from Michael Jordan, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. I think Michael Jordan just hit a billion dollars, if I'm not mistaken, revenue wise. Um, mm -hmm. 
But um, LeBron is a definite close second, you know, for our day and age, yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a definite second. I, I, uh, I know sometimes, you know, like the stories that I hear sometimes tend to be on the negative side, though I don't want him to be on the negative side, mm -hmm. that sometimes people get killed for sneakers because they're so good mm -hmm. and, you know, they're expensive. So people are like, okay, you know, this is something that I want, you mm -hmm. know, and this person has it, I'm not gonna go ahead and pay for it. I'm just gonna go ahead and alleviate the person and get it, Yeah. you know? So do you think that perhaps it might not be wise for a parent to spend money and have their kids get sneakers out of fear that something m could harm them? Um, yeah and no. Um, here lately, I do advise some parents to stand in line with their kids when it comes to buying shoes. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what it is that makes people go crazy like that, you know, and harm other people, but I, I have seen it happen. And um, I What did you see in particular happen? Uh, I used to work at Finish Line about a year ago, and we had a pair of shoes that came out where we actually had people trampled for them because our line was that long because people decided to camp out all night for a better for chance. For shoes, yeah. wow. <laughs> just, just for shoes. And uh, it's it's the marketing aspect from Nike and them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, you know, we'll market it. We'll, yeah. we'll tell them that it's limited. So yeah. there's not a lot of it, which yeah. will build more craze. So they're very good at that. Now with the OMA Expo, mm -hmm. how are you guys able to educate the consumers? Because a lot of people that I saw there were young kids, mm -hmm. you know, under 21, I bet most of them were. Mm -hmm. Is it an environment where you can educate them or is it an environment just to, to exchange shoes? Um, I want to say it was an environment to exchange shoes, but the education came um, and I wasn't, I really didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. But I've seen a lot of education just coming from the trading aspect. Some shoes are worth more than others. Um, mm -hmm. There isn't actually a website where I can tell you what's worth more. It's just like if you if you like shoes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, we'd have one guy, hey, you know, I want those shoes. How much? Oh, I'm not willing to pay that much, but can we trade? Yeah, what do you got? Oh, well, I got a pair of these, you know, and other guys like, well, I might need a pair or two, you know, so. Um, and where that comes from you know the other person would say well this shoe came out this year and this guy wore it and he did this and that and you know just you know it's a long list of just everything and then you know the exchange would happen mm -hmm. so yeah there is a bit of an education aspect you know from the older guys to the younger guys that day mm -hmm. so yeah you're definitely right oh that's great that's great yeah i'm learning quite a bit actually mm -hmm. <laughs> i know this is quite fascinating and stuff like that i really want to thank you for coming on and we're going to go ahead and show a clip of the omaha of the oma uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. I yeah. know I'm like Omaha, but it's OMS sneakers event that you guys held. Mm -hmm. So here we go. My name is Brandon and I uh, work for Evolve Footwear. I sell custom sneakers and custom sneakers with LED lights. Uh, it's definitely different. It's not something you're going to see every day. It's a unique idea. I can use a, a few different models like the Nike Roche, different Griffies, Pennies, LeBrons, uh, even for men and women like Pink. And I've been doing this about four or five years now. I'm from Kansas City and coming up here to Omaha for the Omaha Seeker Expo so far has been a great experience. It's cool to just hang around people into sneakers, into the same kind of thing, do something positive for the city, for kids, and all just like have a really good time without having to worry about anything happening or anything that's not just people having a good time. How you doing? My name is Earl. And Anthony. 
We represent KC Soul, a group that's uh, actually out of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, what we do is we actually uh, we do our own sneaker show once a year. We're, we're working on doing it twice a year. But uh, we actually came out here to Omaha to uh, just to help build and the relationship with the sneaker culture and the sneaker family in the Midwest. A lot of times, the people in the mid, people from like the big cities like Miami and like East Coast, like New York, you know, Baltimore and stuff, they think that in the Midwest we don't really have shoes and we don't really understand the culture. But what we really what we really try to do is to, to build relationships and, like I said, get out, meet people, you know, and people that like us that actually here have been doing doing things sneaker related, positive, and just like spreading a positive image. Uh, you hear so much negative about shoes, and so what we try to do is we try to bridge gaps and bridge barriers, you know, break all ethnicities. Uh, I actually have an erase the hate wristband on right now. Uh, they, my homie actually, he does this, he spells erase with a C uh, for racism, you know, helping to end racism. That's one of the things that uh, we really stand for, is just really bringing everybody together, you know, for one common bond. Uh, you got anything? Um, I mean more. Just look at the people. Um, right now it's a good turnout right now for him. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, this is really what um, what we do. We here for for to support Omaha, and that's it. Yeah, big shout out to Omaha and all of Nebraska. I'm not familiar with every part of it, but yeah, definitely my first time ever in Nebraska, and so far it's been nothing but good vibes, great people, and just like excellent, excellent, positive energy, and like that's all we really, that's all we really push for. So. sneakers event at the Ralston Arena and um, I'm actually standing here by my brother's uh, sneakers. He's a sneakerhead from Mongolia. Um, it's really fascinating to see all these people, um, sneakerheads, here in the arena today. We came here on a fine day. We were looking to get some shoes, you know, of course. And uh, he was the one who bought me here, so how about he talks? <laughs> He's shy. No. No, everyone's shy. Well, we like to look at shoes, and that's what we're all about. So, yeah. Hello, my name is Jalen Bradley. I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. I've been collecting shoes since about fifth grade. I remember uh, my first pair was some retro twos, and when I got that retro card, I decided I wanted every pair that was on that retro card and I'm pretty close to that and the thing that I like about shoes the most is, you know, it's fun to meet new people and do stuff like this, the networking and it's a positive thing for the community so I see myself doing it for a while. Okay, so my name is Fred Whitted and I've been in the sneaker game probably for about a good five or six years now. <laughs> That's my uh, my partner today on the table. Uh, my original, I'm actually wearing this shoe that actually got me interested in selling shoes and collecting shoes and buying shoes. And I don't know if you can see them, but these are the 97 uh, Bread 12s. And so these shoes right here I got for my birthday when I was like, I would say nine years old. I was nine years old and I got them on my birthday. And I've been in love with Jordan, the Jordan brand ever since. Um, currently, I have probably over 80 shoes. Uh, right now, we're just sell I mean, we're just selling a lot of stuff that we don't wear anymore, and we know people that couldn't get a hold of them that would appreciate them. We're not pricing them high. We're not trying to like make a lot of money on them. It's really just the love of the, just the love of shoes and getting networking with people. That's why we're all out here. That's why I help Rodney with help him with all this. Just to network with people and show pretty much show Omaha that young black men are out here doing good things for the community. Like half of the proceeds that we make today are going to go to school supplies that we're going to donate to Central Park Elementary School. So I'm definitely excited about that. And then the other half is just going to go to the next year's event. I mean, for the first year, 
I have to say Omaha came out and supported us a lot and we greatly appreciate it. We thank everybody in Omaha, in the city, the ones who came from out of town, from Des Moines, from California, from Las Vegas, everybody that came and supported this movement, man. It's a real positive thing. I haven't seen a lot of young people do a lot of positive things that are highlighted on the news, unfortunately. But this is just one example of us doing positive things just to show the, the next generation that you can do something positive in Omaha. You can leave a long lasting impression for years to come. Yes, I hope you enjoyed watching that segment on the uh, OMA sneakers event. Now, when is the next event you guys are going to be holding? And oh. how can people get in contact with you guys if they're interested in, you know, participating mm -hmm. or, you know, sharing their sneakers or buying some? Uh, you know, I, I want to say probably another calendar year, only because, <laughs> you know, it takes quite a bit to, uh, to make and to promote. Um, and at the time, you know, the event was made by two 20 year olds and then, and then we had to bring a, a team of other people in on it. So I want to say probably a good uh, calendar year. But um, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, um, you know, you can email me um, OMA Sneaker Expo at AOL.com. Mm -hmm. You can email me that way or um, I'm on all forms of social media as well because I'm 21 and that's just how <laughs> we roll. So um, that's how you spend your time. you yep, know. <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm on Instagram at Rodney OMA mm -hmm. or uh, Twitter. Same name as well, too. So if you want to follow me on there and keep up with me, we can uh, definitely set that up as well. So. Oh, thank you so much for coming to the program. We yeah, appreciate of course, it. You know? Of course, of course. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So. Years of corruption, obstruction, and greed. But take away the money, we don't have a lot of needs. I know we stick into the script, but we tend to overread. Discredit our own people like you'll never succeed. I wonder why we do that. Sometimes I'll do it too. I have too much pride like your local jock at school. From a land that shines with talent, you probably find the next jewel. But told those kids keep pushing because this world could be so cruel. High expectations put you on a pedestal. Discourage you from dreaming shouldn't be the golden rule. I try to tell them fools, my people soaring like them eagles. Show your culture where you from. Boy, quit hiding from those peoples. It makes me so sick because our history's so rich. We try to be like them, Abercrombie and Fitch. I would rather be in the place where I would fit. I'd rather be SUD. I would never switch. The most profound thing that's happened to me. That's kind of hard to answer, like, you know, especially yeah. like, I mean, I'm not comparing myself to, you know, or my story or whatever with anybody's, but I think people back home, you know, their stories are most, more, like, more profound, I guess, um, than mine would be, but I would say. The most profound thing I guess that's happened to me is me coming to the United States because I wouldn't be able to experience, you know what I mean, this reality, this world. I don't think I would know what a democracy is. And it's profound because now that I do, I can go and change things, you know what I mean? I can go, I can go and, and, and inspire change within people because I think change is inspired within the mind. Um, and I think change is inspired with love, you know, and, and having that concept in itself is profound, you know. Um, it's profound that I get all the support, you know what I mean, as much support as I do from not, not only my people, but from everybody. Um, it feels great. Um, I think it's profound that I woke up this morning, I took a deep breath, you know. Um, um, I'm the oldest of all, I'm the oldest of five, I have all sisters, um, big ups to them, they've helped me grow so much and they've, I guess, helped me see um, what life is for an African woman in America, you know, because they get it worse than we do from, you know, them being made fun of, first of all, their skin color, and then um, them being called bald-headed or whatever, and 
that in turn pushing them to, you know what I mean, you know, I, I always say this, I hate weave, you know what I mean, um, but I understand it, you know, I understand weave, uh, I understand why it is, how, how it's came to be, um, and I think since, since I first, you know what I mean, started being fully immersed in my African culture and African history, my mindset started changing about it, so, you know, Whenever I would see Weave, I would kind of get repulsed by it, like, oh, that's European-esque, which is not a bad thing, you know what I mean? But I think we need to, ha you know, show our own identity, you know? Um, I think that's important. So I think with the fellas out there, what I'll say is, you know, um, take it easy on our women, man. <laughs> They're going through so much, man. And, um, and I think moving forward, we need balance in our families. So our relationships, I want them to be better, man. Like our our relationships, so we can grow in, in our household. We can have that kid see uh, the balance of a, a mother and a father in a home. You know what I mean? So they can grow and know that. We got millions who are hungry and needy. They don't show it on TV. You got it easy. Media try to deceive. We on the flight from Africa. Thought we had it good, got introduced to hoods through illustrations from GZ. Land the bikinis and beaches uneasy. That's how it make me feel. I said we keep it real. We in the top 10% of the globe. Got a black president who won't kill your family if these words are spoken ill of him. Now look at me now, I'm chasing thrills again. Focused on dope. Got the milli ants that are hopeless and starving. Can't feel the beer cause they father hardly in. If they at all, man, it ain't they fault. Born in such predicament, share in this ridiculous glare at the certificate. Like why me? Got children and armies, their souls on deep freeze. Cold-blooded killers, they harder than Chief Keith. These hearts of concrete, pieces what I seek understanding that famine eats. The very essence of our core, but as a nation we ignore. So I pray your heart absorbs. Bob J. Thank you for joining us on today's program. We hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to seeing you next week. If you believe you can achieve.